On today's Locked On Texans podcast, Cody and I discuss Tank Dell returning back to form uh, from his injury, how he can impact his offense moving forward. And speaking of the offense, mm. should we all band together and give Damian Pierce a second chance to prove his worth? You are Locked On Texans, your daily Houston Texans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. H-Town, Texans fans across the world, welcome to this Thursday episode of the Locked On Texans podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. If this is your first time watching or listening to the podcast and show, thank you for stopping by. Please subscribe, like, and comment to the Locked On Texans page on YouTube, and wherever you listen to your podcast, follow us on Twitter at Locked On Texans. Thank you to all of our returning listeners lending your ear for another episode as Cody and I, during this slow period, continue to talk Texans, Mm -hmm. uh, your team every day. Y'all know who the man is on the other side of the screen, Texas Credential Media Member, Sports Illustrator's own Cody Davis. I'm your Texans football analyst, John, some sports guy, Hickman. Super excited to talk about this offensive side of the ball. We'll get to the Defense, we, we're, we're going to be looking at why the team prioritized and emphasized, put an emphasis on the defensive line during free agency. Uh, but I can't wait to talk about a second chance for DP. We'll open up today's show looking at Tank Dell returning from injury and just what that means for this team moving forward. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning Five dollar bet that's 200 bucks in your pocket if your bet wins. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on, uh, to get started today. Uh, over the weekend, the last few days, we've got a quote from D'Amico Ryan's at the with the uh, the owner's the, uh, meeting, the owner's in meeting in Orlando. My man out there with a nice little polo. One thing I like about D'Amico Ryan's really quick, man. D'Amico is always just, I guess, like camera ready, right? No matter <laughs> what, you can tell. And when you hear him speak about what he wants to build for this franchise, you know, good friends, good husbands, good good dads, good fathers, good role models, and things of that nature. Appearance means a lot to him, and he's always in a you know in in, in a great light whenever you see him out in the media. So shout out to D'Amico. But I had an opportunity to briefly mention Tank Dell. He said we should have Tank participating in our offseason program, and that's huge. We know about the injury, and we know how this offense took a hit once Tank Dale went down. Again, immediately referencing the last time we saw this team play football against the Baltimore Ravens in the game that I will always classify as the what could have been for Tank Dale game. Uh, but here that he will mm-hmm. be participating in the offseason programs and he's getting back to form. And if a lot of you guys haven't seen it on social media, mm-hmm. Tank Dale posting his workouts, he looks as quick as he did last go round, mm-hmm. you know, last offseason. Cody, I wanted to just talk about it and ask you, I'm kick it off with you, right? With him returning from this injury, being able to participate in offseason programs. Going into year two, and we know the connection. Who you know, last year ended off seven hundred nine yards, seven TDs. What does that mean for this offense going into year two with Tank Dale, CJ, Bobby Slow, Gerard Johnson? Right, a lot of year twos going into this sophomore year for those guys. What does that mean for Tank in this offense? As long as he is able to get back to the player that he was last year, this offense is going to be just as just as explosive or even better. And, you know, Tank Dale, and, and I'm glad we're talking about this because Tank Dale is the perfect example of what we thought going into the 2023 season and what actually came about. And I know I, I mentioned this on several occasions, but, John, remember Houston Texans traded up third round to draft him. You know, I'm watching him in Ricky Minicamp, watching him um, doing OTAs. You know, I'm watching him at the start of training camp. And remember, my, my, my top objective, my 
early evaluation of Tank Dale was, man, he's just going to be somebody that, that they're going to use a, utilize from, you know, time to time. He's probably going to get majority of his snaps as a kick returner. Um, you know, I, I wasn't really expecting much, but it wasn't until the joint practices against the Miami Dolphins is when I say, you know what, that young man could definitely be something special. And then next thing you know, throughout the, throughout the what, the first nine, 10 games of the regular season prior to him getting injured, um, Tank Dell exploded so much to the point had he continued to stay healthy, the Houston Texans would have had not one, but two 1,000 yard receivers. And to understand in his very first year, how much Tank Dell meant to that offense, all you have to do is go back and take a look at the numbers. I believe the Houston Texans had averaged somewhere in the ballpark to 320, 330 yards when Tank Dell was on the field. However, after he went down with that leg injury, it went down to about 240, 250, which meaning that this was an offense that was losing at least 80 to 90 yards based off of one player and the one thing that made Tank Dell special was his ability to get open was his ability to have that connection with CJ Stroud and John I'm I'm not going to go as far as to say the loss against the Baltimore Ravens was a what if game if Tank Dell was on the field I'm not going to go that far as to say that the results of that game would have been a lot different however I would agree with you on this cuz I know you mentioned it before I would say if Tank Dell was on the field in Baltimore. I think the Houston Texans would have given the Baltimore Ravens just a little bit more, just, just a little bit more on the offensive side, being a little bit more competitive. Because as we saw, if a team had an opportunity to focus on Nico Collins, and of course, if they could not run the ball with, with Devin Singletary, that Which made that offense saw a lot. <laughs> exactly that made that offense non existent. And I think adding Tank Dell back to this offense is definitely going to be uh, it's going to be just as explosive. But here's the best part about this. You talk about year two. He's going to come back better. CJ's going to come back better. And the, my favorite part out of all of this, Bobby Slog is going to come back better. So, you know, it's just a, it's just one of them situations, man. As long as he come back and be the player that he was prior to this leg injury, man, the sky's the limit for this kid. One thing I like about the idea of Bobby Slower coming back for year two and everybody else coming back for year two being in this offense is just Bobby having an understanding and a grip on the players he has mm -hmm. and understanding what he can and cannot do and, and, and really just having a full season. You know, I saw what you did your rookie year, had games where at times we questioned whether or not he was the number one receiver. Mm. But just, you know, I can I can get away with this because I have this talent. Or this talent that I have in this player is able to do X, Y, and Z on the field. So I, I like that with everybody coming back for year two. I think that was a big reason why we saw the McNairs really do a, a good job of retaining mm. Johnson, Slowick, and a lot of the guys that they did. Because year two is way more important than year one. This is where you start building. But with Tank on the field, there's a couple of things, right? If I can just fast forward to the season. What what I what I saw from Tank Dale is just a really more active Dalton Schultz, man, and, and, and him being able to just kind of eat up uh the middle of the field for this offense with CJ, along with uh Nico Collins to do the very good job of catching it uh in the middle of the field. But overall, him returning to form from this injury and, and with D'Amico Ryan's coming out and saying that he'll be ready for all season program, I'm just glad that he'll be ready for the start of training camp. Hmm. That is the biggest thing. This team, when you think about some of the hinders that they've had, you know, when injury is brought up, it's just not being prepared when the time is needed, right? Kenya Green is the first player that I can think of. You know, off-season program, which has put him on a timeline that's pushed back a little bit. And so with a guy like Tank Dell that we know what he's capable of, we haven't seen – what maybe some of the other guys are capable of due to injury and, and time off and away from the field. But we know what this guy, this young man can be. Mm. Young man, how old are we? <laughs> but we know what this young man can be on a football field, what he can do, his talent-wise. I'm just excited that he's going to be ready for camp, that his timeline won't be pushed back. Another guy that I think of immediately is the is the wide receiver that we talk about a lot on this show John that, Lincoln. you know, uh, regardless of how a lot of people may feel we think of him, we cannot wait to see him blossom into an impact player, John Menchie, who has mm -hmm. been robbed of off seasons for the, like the last three seasons now, it feels like. 
you know, go, going back to him injuring himself during the college football playoffs uh, and, and him not having an opportunity to have the offseason there. Then he get diagnosed, right? So with 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 uh with D'Amico saying that, man, I, I I don't know about you guys, but just hearing him say that, and now we know that the timeline is still intact for Tank to come back and be that impactful player. To me, guys, I'm excited about that because we have seen this team be held back because the timeline of some players that this team was hoping to pan out, right? Whether it's trading up, trading back and getting players or trading up for some of these players, right? And some of this capital that has been used to get some of these players, we've seen a timeline thrown off due to injury and just not being ready because of all-season program. And with Tank, it's not going to happen. I think that's probably the biggest plus out of all of it. Hey, guys, listen. Buying tickets to your next game should not be a hassle. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to the next big event. With game time, you are finding the fastest and easiest way to buy all of your sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. What are some of the things that I like about the game time app experience? Well, guys, I love the last minute tickets that they have available with the flash and zone deals. It's easy to buy and find tickets, buy, find and buy tickets for every kind of event in my area, right? And you get the views from your seats in the venue, my favorite part of the app where I can just literally see where I'm sitting and get an idea of the atmosphere that I'll be surrounded in and, my, and in my situation that I can't wait to be immersed in, especially when I go to these Rockets games the last few games of the season because we're making this play and push. So I know exactly where I'm sitting, sitting, so I know the energy that I'll be in, right? They also have zone deals where you pick the section. The game time picks the seats for big-time savings. And on top of that, with the game time guarantee, you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Download the Game Time app right on your phone, create an account, use code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account, redeem code locked on, L O C K E D O N, for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back, Locked On Texans listeners and viewers to this Thursday episode of the Locked On Texans podcast. Cody and I really thought it would be important right now to just take a take a step back and analyze and view the player that we really do love on this show, right? As a person, mm-hmm. as a young man, as a you know, the guy that he is in the locker room. And this second season, just seeing him, I think have to battle through the adversity of not being maybe the guy that he expected, the coaching everybody staff expected, the, right, the fans, everybody expected him to be. And so he had to sit and find a way to be impactful on his team. And we know what he did uh, for the return game for Houston. And that's Damian Pierce, who in his rookie year, we look at Damian Pierce, 939 yards, four TDs, right? And I think the best part about it, 73 yards a game, uh, for Damian Pierce on the ground, 4.3 yards per carry. And then in your sophomore year, also 13 games started in your rookie year. Sophomore year, seven games started, 416 yards, two TDs. But this is where it gets very disappointing, 2.9 yards per carry, 29.7 yards a game on the ground. And in his first two years, really a non-factor in the passing game, which, by the way, I do think that was a mistake this year, getting him more opportunities in the open field in that passing game. I thought should have been a point of emphasis. But, Cody, we've been hard on him here on the show, right? Not as hard mm-hmm. as maybe other people, but I think the hardest criticism we had was at the beginning of the season when I came on the show and I said, I don't think the expectations that we placed on Damian Pierce will become uh, the realization of the season. And it did. And we were hard on him because – whether it was a scheme, whether it was a blocking, or whether it was just Damian Pierce, a lot of times I personally would say that I think it was Damian Pierce, and 
his vision issues. Mm-hmm. Be fair, he took a step back. But with last season, right, he's still a rookie, under rookie contract. There's no need to really move on from him. We know that the Texans signed Joe Mixon. He's still on the roster, Damian Pierce. Should we be expecting for a second chance from the organization and a revitalization from Damian Pierce? Um, man, this is a tough question. He he's definitely going to get another chance, depending on whether or not they address the running back position um during the draft. Because if they go out there and get, let's say for the sake of this argument, let's say they go out there and draft Jonathan Brooks, the running back that I really like um, out of Texas, um, I could definitely see them, you know, kind of using Damian Pierce more so in the kick return game, uh, which, by the way, I'm surprised that they did not utilize that a lot more towards the end of last season, especially the success that we saw him have. I believe he was he he scored the only touchdown in that Christmas Eve blowout loss um, against the Cleveland Browns, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that's when that's when that was. But, you know, and I was a little bit shocked that the Texans didn't want to utilize that too much. You know, maybe it's something that they was just playing around with um, towards the end of last season. They're definitely going to use it upon this year. But, John, I, I cannot sit here and say that I have enough faith that if they do give him a, another opportunity to be running back number two, uh, I cannot sit here and say that I actually have the trust that he's going to have an opportunity to revitalize his, his career. Uh, and, and, look, I get it, I understand it, you know, like we say here a lot on this show, even more so when we talk about John Mechie, you have to give these players three years. I'm getting to the point where you probably got to give these players four years. Um, Just take a look at what took place with the other team I cover in the Houston Rockets and Jalen Green. Early on in the season, seemed like he was a bust. Now it looked like he might be the second coming of Kobe. But with all that being said, you know, you just got to give these young players time. And I go back to something that you literally just pointed to. Damian Pierce was never known as a running back to be utilized as a pass catcher coming out of the backfield. When you take a look at where Bobby Sloyd has came from, you know how much he relied upon his running back and one of the running backs. And one of the things that he wants to make sure that they do is make sure you could utilize them as a pass catcher. I believe that's why Devin Singletary was able to thrive in this offense. And I believe that's why Joe Mixon is damn sure going to thrive in this Mm. offense. However, when I look at Damian Pierce, I look at it from a standpoint, maybe he just isn't in the right system or maybe he just needed that year to take a step back, learn, and then he's going to take that that leap of getting back to the player that he was during his rookie season or come close to the player that he was in his rookie season. Look, I'm not about to sit here and say that he can get back to the player that was on the verge of rushing for a thousand yards. However, I would say best case scenario would be he's able to be utilizing this offense and the Houston Texans definitely have their running back number two, and he has to be productive, plain and simple. You know, I think when, when I look at Damian Pierce, and I do want to give him credit, he did get better in one aspect and area in his game, and that was That's yards it. per reception um, mm-hmm. this past season. And, again, I, I do put uh, some blame on Bobby because I thought with the way that he ran the ball, because there was a lot of opportunities that was left out on the table as a runner with the ball in his hand because – I hate to say this, and I, I don't want to catch flack. I don't want to hear that. Well, you never – but the vision was an issue for Damian Pierce. In my opinion, I don't know about nobody else, but I also thought whenever he gets to the second level, then you're seeing a player that's hard to bring down. Derrick Henry-esque. And I thought that there should have been more opportunity, screen opportunities. Um uh, you know, maybe a curl out of the backfield opportunity where you could just give him some space and opportunity where now people are making business decisions on whether or not they want to tackle him. So I do want to give him credit, you know, just getting better as a yards per catch type of guy from last year compared to his first year in the NFL. And also last year being a very good return man, nearly averaging 33 yards per return. But I think for me, it's all about training camp. It's all about – I, I think Houston will draft a running back. I think Houston 
who did recently just trade for Joe Mixon and then gave him a three-year extension. Mm-hmm. I think Houston wants this to be a full running back team. We may not get a lot of carries out of Joe, right? He may be a 1,000-yard rusher, but if Joe is playing and being behind this, a productive and healthy offensive line where maybe you can reduce the number of carries and he's just that productive, then maybe you can have a Damian Pierce in relief of, mm. right? Um, but I do think for him, man, it's all about if there's going to be a second chance to be RB2, RB3, or just on the roster, period. Training camp is going to be so essential to his success. It's going to be vital to whether or not, you know, were you doing the things that we needed you to do and improve on, right? When it comes down to that major cut day, the same like the old NFL, they got one day to get in rid of everybody, right? Mm -hmm. And so you didn't have a favorable sophomore season, and you didn't have that on top of having a new coaching staff across the board for the most part. Danny Bear returned, but outside of that, this was a franchise that came in with some different expectations, and they did not draft you, right? Nick Serio did, but your head coach and offensive coordinator, they didn't draft you. So he's going he's gonna to be put in this box to where the only way we're letting you out is if you do everything right to solve the puzzle, to get the key out, and you get yourself out. And once you get yourself out, now we're looking at you as a different player. I do think there's a possibility for Damian Pierce. The talent is there. Mm-hmm. There are things that I know that he, they want him to work on. And if he does that, it's going to be a, a, a fun training camp, right? Because he's going to be in competition with whoever else they bring in. It could be draft. It could be post-NFL draft. It could be a guy that they decide to bring in right before training camp. This team has done that before. He just got to go do it, man. And, and, and yeah. I think he have a shot, but Cody, like like you mentioned, faith wise, on a scale of one to ten, for me, faith wise, I'm at a five. Mm. I know you can do it, but would it happen? Is yeah. where I'm at with it. <laughs> and and since we're talking about Damian Pierce, I do want to mention this because uh, you know me, John. I'm all about you know paying attention to the human aspect of these players. Right, and uh, uh, yeah, we both are. And I, I, I've always wondered this throughout the whole entire year. And, and this is not me reporting, just me, you know, just watching from afar as somebody who was around this team inside the locker room, you know, a lot over the last two seasons with this team. There was moment moments where I questioned if everything was OK with him on a personal level, because, mm. you know, mm. 2022, I understand it. It was a better season for him on an individual standpoint, but every time I compare how he was, at least in the locker room, off record, um, every time I compare that version of Damian Pierce to the version that we got in 2023, it just wasn't the same. His personality wasn't the same. His demeanor wasn't the same. He wasn't as open with us. When I say open, I mean, you know, forget about the interview standing there at the podium. Hey, Damian Pierce, how you feel? No, no, no. We talking about just, you know, chopping it up at his locker. Hey, did you see... The Rockets last night, what you think, blah, 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 you know, laughing and talking, that kind of stuff. And, you know, we didn't get that version of Damian Pierce. And throughout this whole entire season, I would just wonder whether or not everything was okay with him on a Where his mind was at. Yeah, where his mind was at. Because I swear there was moments where he just didn't seem like he was in, in, in 2022. Once again, I understand it. He had a hell of a season in 2022 on an individual standpoint. That'll make anybody happy. You know, then when you compare his production to 2023, it's like, okay, well, what's going on? But, you know, just the Damian Pierce, that personality that we love, it just wasn't there a lot of times this past season. And if there was an individual issue going on, um, you know, of course, pray that everything ended up being okay, will be okay. But, you know, shout out to Damian Pierce, man. Hopefully we can put it like this. If he could take the helm as the second running back on this team, that means the Houston Texans are in for a hell of a season. I'll say this, man. If he does redeem himself and he gets back to that place where he's impacting the game, right, he may be a great waiver wire pickup in fantasy, honestly. Yeah, it's true. No, nobody may draft him in the initial draft. Like He was a high pick last year doing a lot of people's drafts. Um, I was one of them, and by week six, I dropped him. I was like, I can't, I can't, you're wasting the roster spot. 
But I, I'm jokingly saying if he does pan out, that will be great for everybody that's believing in him. And there's two people here on this show that believes in him. We we, we just got to see it. We, we're not reporting on the human aspect of things, right? Strictly football. He didn't get it done last year, and we want to see him get it done. The question is, will he? And that is where I think we're just kind of like, ah, it was so bad, it's hard to see the good. But we're still hoping that he does. Hey, listen, guys, go ahead and say goodbye to Busted Brackets because with FanDuel, they are letting you bet on every game of the tournament. That's right. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's $200 in your pocket to use on point spreads, money lines, much more. You can even pick who's going to win it all. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops today until they cut down the nets. Welcome back, Locked On Texan listeners and viewers. Free agency was highlighted by the defensive line. Cody, why do you think so? <laughs> Autry, Hunter, uh, Settle, Fadikowski. I'm bringing back Khalil Davis. I can't wait to have an opportunity to talk to him. Hopefully we can get him on the show. Hmm. Uh you know who else did they sign? Texas. Oh, they, everybody. It's like 15 everybody. signings. They called me too. <laughs> like 15 signings, about about 12 was on the defensive side of the ball. And out of those 12, nine was defensive linemen. But they called me. Coach, they said, I know you three some. What, what, what can you do? <laughs> <laughs> but Coach D'Amico Ryan's did talk about the Houston Texans plan, why they decided to focus so much on on the defensive line, and he said that they were just looking to play good, sound football, trying to dominate the defense, and he said, and I kind of agree with this statement, if you want to win in this league and you want to be successful in the playoffs, you have to stop some good quarterbacks. John, I know a lot of people, including myself, I don't know about you, but including myself, there was a moment where I kept saying, man, why do you keep signing so many defensive linemen? Um... And I understand I wasn't surprised because every time I talked about the Houston Texans revamping this this, this roster, revamping the defense, I always pointed back to how much Coach D'Amico Ryan's always talked about um, improving the defensive line unit. However, he, he made a great point. In order for you to win in this league, have success in the playoff, playing in the AFC, you're going to have to stop some of the league's best quarterbacks and just take a look like right off the top of your head if in order for the houston texans to win in 2024 five or six they're going to have to beat patrick mahomes lamar jackson joe burrow shoot i mean if he comes back after four years deshaun watson we know how good he can be and you know and that's just guys outside of your division in your division you got trevor lawrence and anthony richardson so it makes sense. So I'm going to give the Houston Texans a pass on this one as to why. Coach no Will Levis? Ryan's. You ever say Will Levis? Uh, I got to see more of out of Will Levis. I, 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 I would say, not you know, go back and forth, but I'll say more Will Levis than I would AR. Really? No, no, no. Put it like this. When the Houston Texans played against the Titans, I understand it was later in the season. Will Levis looked okay. When the Houston Texans played against AR, I understand it was week two, and like everybody said, week two, you know, they lost to the Colts. They were still trying to find their way. Anthony Richardson looked damn good to the point it was scary. <laughs> so uh, I don't know, man. I, 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 I don't know about saying Will Levis over – Anthony Richardson as of right now, but to give that to, to Coach D'Amico Ryan's point, um, he is right, man. In order for this team to win like we all hoping they do, especially while people like CJ and Will and everybody are on their rookie contracts, um, believing that they have a championship window, they definitely going to have to make sure that they contain some of the best um, quarterbacks in the league. Yeah. Um, I agree, man. It's, it's no way around it. I don't even have really much to say. I just know that we've talked about it before. I think the engine of their defense will be their defensive front. Mm -hmm. And, and, and what a, we, we see it all the time where you got guys up front that could, man, just wreak havoc. If you can win without blitzing, a four man front that can just get after the quarterback, it makes you wonder what, what type of coverages are you throwing out there? Right. You know, who, who's, who, man, it, the opportunity that some of the other guys are going to get. And Will Anderson and Daniel Hunter, man, like I, Will Anderson 
you know, maybe you're not sack wise. He may not have a huge jump or have seven this last year, maybe get to eight or nine, maybe crack 10. But just imagine what he's going to do in terms of being what he's naturally good at. And that's stopping the run. I, I can't wait. I'm sorry to cut you off. I was just sitting here thinking, I can't wait to ask D'Amico. Hopefully, I'm probably going to get an opportunity to do so in the next couple of weeks. But I want to ask D'Amico, what did he see out of this defensive front? Because when I think back to 2023, I'm like, that was a damn good defensive front. <laughs> I mean, you, you set a franchise record in sacks. You was top, what, six, top seven in, in run defense. I mean, I understand it. I mean, Lamar Jackson dominated you in the playoffs, but it's Lamar freaking Jackson. He damn near dominated everybody, except for when he <laughs> act like he didn't know how to play against Kansas City, but that's another top for another day. But I, I just want to know, what did he see to make him say, you know what, we got to continue to beef up an area that's already damn good? That's a great question. Um, that's a great question. I'm gonna ask him. I'm gonna ask him. Yeah, uh, but I think, I think that that front. Yeah, I can't. I, that front is just gonna make everybody's job easier. Mm-hmm. And and I think that's why they did a good job of bringing in players that they believe will fit. I know they missed out on a couple of guys, but you know they got they got they got some great foundational pieces. I mean uh, pieces. Hunter and, and Will Anderson, they're going to set the tone. Everybody else just got to do your job. I mean, he was going all out on the defensive end. Because remember, they brought in Hunter, and they were still going after Chase Young and Armstead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Armstead. <laughs> after God. they had signed Autry already. Yeah, after they signed Autry. So, yeah, no, they, they, they want to they get at the guys, and they, wanna, they want their front to be able to cause the pressure that everybody else on the back end can feast off of. I, I think so. Maybe. Um, and I think that, that'll be the game plan. Thank you guys for watching and listening to this Thursday episode of the Locked On Texans podcast. Please be sure again to subscribe, like, and comment to the podcast on YouTube and wherever you listen to your podcast. Give me a follow on Twitter at John underscore Kickman 12. And as always, I'm your host, Cody M. Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, that's Cody C-O-T-Y D-A-V-I-S underscore 24. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace.